everybody, I am Leon Gray, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this drop shadow effect here using Inkscape 0.92. So what you're going to want to do first is open up a new document window of Inkscape, and you're going to want to go to View, Custom, and that'll give you this custom window up here, or this custom tab. Then you're going to go to go to File, Document Properties, set the display unit to pixels, and check or uncheck the show page border. We don't need that. So the first thing we're going to want to do is open up our Align and Distribute tab by clicking this, and then open up the Edit Colors, Fills, Gradients, and Strokes menu right here. So now that you've got that open, I'm going to click this button that says Create Rectangles and Squares, and I'm going to hold Control and Shift to create a perfectly symmetrical square. You can't see it because it's white, but I'm going to change that to like a nice light blue like this one, and the hexadecimal code is 0066FF. Mine is uh, set at like 50 percent opacity, so I'm going to bring that all the way up. That looks good. Bring this down a little bit. So you can see here that I used like a font that's a slab serif. So I'm going to click the T key to get to my text tool. And I'm just going to type in while holding shift L and G. Then I'm going to hit control shift and T to bring up my text editor or my text and font editor. And the font I'm going to be using is called Chunk 5. I will put a link to that in the description below. It's a free font. I'm going to click that. And if you can't see it on your screen, you can like click on a font anywhere in this text window and just start typing chunk. And I'm going to hit click apply. And it's going to make that the Chunk 5 font. So I'm going to hit control and scale this up a bit like that and I'm gonna go over to my align tab and you're gonna want last selected excuse me last selected chosen yours will probably be set to page so go to last selected with this still selected I'm gonna hold shift click on this blue square and go to center on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis that looks pretty good so in order for what we want to do to work, we have to convert this to a path. So I'm going to go to path, object to path. And whenever you create text objects and you convert them to paths, they're always going to be in a group as indicated down here by group of two objects. So I'm going to click this button that says ungroup selected groups and that <coughs> ungroups them. With those two still selected, I'm going to go to path union and now that's all one object all right that's pretty good so what you're going to want to do now is go to extensions with that selected I'm sorry click this uh, object and go to extensions generate from path motion and the whoa the number of values I'm going to use are 345 Magnitude and angle, magnitude 300, angle 45, and I'm going to click live preview just to see how that looks. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to click apply and close out of that. Now you can see that this made it all one object, but it's like a group. So I'm going to click this button up here that says ungroup. And now this object is back to where it should be. But this object still has a bunch of groups in it, so I'm going to click this button again. And you'll see that it's ungrouped it to a lot of these tiny, like, different pieces. What you're going to want to do is go to Path, Union, and that'll make it all one object. Let's see? So, since this isn't very readable, I'm going to change my original object to white, just so you can read it. That looks pretty good. I'm going to change the opacity of this, or actually no, I'm sorry. 
I'm going to duplicate this object by going right click, duplicate. Then I'm going to hold shift, click on this object, and go to object, clip, set. So what that does is that it keeps the shadow border within the actual square and rectangle. So as you can see, the shadow is probably too much. I'm going to drop it, drop it down a bit. I'm going to go over to my opacity tab over here in the fill and stroke menu and drop that down to about 47%. And that's how you can create a drop shadow in Inkscape. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and if you liked the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you!